and welcome everybody to another fantastic day of proving grounds i will be a paper play caster for the evening grab she grabs the most ravishing man on the internet joined here by my side yet again by this wonderfully handsome gentleman mr dean double fox merrick dean how you doing baby i'm doing great but like we, we need to talk about the elephant in the room before anything else you turned 14 today man can we, can we get some happy birthdays in the chat for Mr. Ravish who turned 14 years old? That's kind of insane. Yeah. It's incredible the kind of work you've been able to do so far. I cannot wait to hit my growth spurt, Dean. I think when I'll finally, when I go to 25, I might just be able to make it to six, six, six foot. But until then, we stayed down here. But thank you very much, guys. Yes, it is indeed my birthday here today. So I would not want to spend it any other way than be able to cast some more fantastic Proving Grounds games with you all. It's uh, but, you got some good games today for for our gifts. We're in top eight now, Ravish, which is one of the best things that you can actually talk about because we've got some fantastic best of eight games. We get a chance to kind of look over the schedule and we get to see some of the teams that have dropped out and whatnot as the uh, the schedule kind of comes up. I'm excited for today's games. We had a, a couple of big ones. Uh, TLA beating Dignitas. Finally, somebody was able to do it right. Like <laughs> it took oh. uh, for a very long time. Dignitas was on a very long win streak, but here it was the TLA just yesterday were able to actually bring them down, which was pretty impressive. And then of course the other side of the bracket uh the no war run for wild card got put out just a little bit earlier than we would have expected 100 views was able to take that 2-1 over top of the amateur squad that's trying to lift everybody on their backs right now bro i was honestly so shocked to just watching that game yesterday like just looking at tla and just seeing i do want to say like it does look like although there are very close matches but so far with so many of these games like when there's a rift there's a rift dean but considering we're on a summer reserve for all these i guess it makes sense but i'm tis how did i get on this broadcast but we do have like you mentioned some fantastic games ahead of us today too starting off with what you see in front of your face right now that round three bracket coming at in front of you with resolve versus imt first up Actually, today we're doing GGA versus C9 Academy. If I recall, it was just a couple of days ago that there was a reschedule necessary. So uh, we'll get a chance to observe, uh, obviously, Resolve versus IMTA. Should be a fun one between those two. But our day kicks off uh, with GGA versus C9 Academy. A little bit of a, a fun matchup there as uh, GGA has now done this incredible thing twice in a row. Yeah, as uh, you know what, you're right, which, uh, which, by the way, I believe I just heard a production or you're telling something really important. I will get back to you then in a couple of seconds, but like you were saying, yeah, Dean, it's like things switch around back and forth. I, I saw the bracket and I was like, huh, okay, so this is what's happening, but like you were saying, yeah, it's like the team discussion is already happening right now. It's moving on to GG versus C9A and GG already here, man. Like, there's such such a good team i've just seen them develop throughout the overall academy season although they've had the rough beginnings but you know bringing it with niles bringing it with the newbie too and c9a on the other end as well a dominant team through and throughout and i think both these teams right now consider we're already in top eight they have a lot to prove but also a lot to gain yeah uh we actually have samfong fast five another little birthday gift for you where we get a chance Yay! to see all the fantastic things um Let's just take a look, to, look at some stats here, because I know that's your favorite thing to do when you turn 25 years old. Um, <laughs> Yumi is rocking the support item transformation. Still, I don't think anywhere near where Diamond's number was, but that's going to be a number that stands for probably the longest time ever, so nothing shocky about that one. I mean, honestly, not at all, too, but considering, through, but, but considering throughout just the entire, like, overall player bracket with what we see, like, all these dudes, bro, like, absolutely disgusting, too, and considering TakeOver right now, like... The fact that you see that it's just almost all these amateur teams and TSM being in half the bracket, but one main thing I want to point out uh, out of all this team, wildcard, right? The the one main amateur team here with, of course, a very stacked roster, hashtag stack the deck, is in as well three of these brackets here. So, like, really, I'm seeing they came to play, although things a little bit back and forth yesterday, though. I am generally surprised. Shout out to Triple, only member from FlyQuest out here, still killing that he is. Um, we also, of course, uh, we, we get a chance to zoom in on Cloud9 up against the side of GGA today specifically. We have fastest 10k gold from King. Nothing shocking about that as he, he loves to be able to have that gold inside of his pocket. Great carry champion or great carry uh, in that bottom side here for the side of C9 Academy. Up against fastest support item transformation. Can we see either one of them compete? We, we never get competitions for these Samsung Fast 5 Ravish. It's so upsetting. I want to see somebody just compete specifically so that they could try to beat King's fastest 10k gold. Maybe Prismal could hit that mark if newbies helping him out a little bit today 
I mean, I imagine he will be, like, considering that today's all about togetherness, about friendship, and about my birthday and nothing else. So I say <laughs> I want to go ahead and decree it, of course, that it will happen today, or else I, my name is not Ravishy Ravish, the most Ravishy man on the internet. I'm putting my name on the line for this team. So, you know, already a lot is at stake here. But as you saw with those Fast Five, we do have a phenomenal roster, like, uh, up in front of us, too. But unfortunately... Based on the opposing team, we didn't see many GGA players out there except Newbie. No, we did not. Um, GGA had uh, what was kind of a little bit of a rough split to begin with uh, in Academy, especially their first half yeah. was really rough. Their second half got a lot better. Um, and as they continue to kind of ramp up through Proving Grounds entirely, they keep getting better and better. I know we've only had two splits of Proving Grounds, but this is the second time now that Golden Guardians has been like bottom two, bottom three inside of Academy, and they ended up being top eight or better inside of Proving Grounds, so top half team. That, that, I think, stands for something. I think we can call this the Proving Grounds buff, at least for the first time. One of these teams is pulling one, and Golden Guardians is my first initiate into that group of teams that is going to be receiving a Proving Grounds buff. Every time they come back, they seem to improve their play better and better and better, and as the split kind of goes on, they just look more improved the day by day, much better than other teams are able to kind of adapt. And so Gold Guardians exceeding expectations inside of a tournament like this, continuing uh, what they did inside of the spring split as well. And this right here, too, I think is going to be really a really big test for them as well. If they're able to stand up up against the likes of C9 Academy, then definitely as they make their way through the Proving Grounds, that PG buff generally becomes more and more real. And Dean, right, it's like that PG buff I find stands for the teams that we're going to see it later on in the day as well. You know, teams that resolve, who even in last PG, right off the first round, they took a game. Well, they, they, they take the game off the second seed and it did it again this split. So... I think already it's like what whatever magic is in the air, whatever comes to the Proving Ground tournament, I find is genuinely beautiful and wonderful. We spent a lot of time talking about GGA here, Dean. Let's break down C9. Yeah, I like that you bring up that point about Barrage and, of course, now Resolve. In the previous split, Barrage had upset the two seed, which was Team Liquid Academy, who ended up getting put out in the... the second round yeah. effectively of the first like bottom round in order to get put out immediately even though they were one of our top two academy seeds very unexpected departure c9 was thrust into a very similar position by a very similar team resolve came back with essentially the exact same roster barring their addition of array ended up losing or uh, they ended up my apologies uh resolve that is ended up coming out beating our number two seed in cloud nine academy dropping them immediately into the losers position thankfully they didn't go out in the first round like team liquid academy did in just the spring split uh you know one year or uh, one split go but here they are now they've been able to climb their way through the ranks they've been doing a lot better um they had of course their, their first round match and then they had the c9 kind of civil war were able to win mm -hmm. both of those in very convincing fashion they look like they're getting back on track with where they needed to be when they first stepped into the tournament um here they, they get a, a very kind of clash of styles between the likes of golden guardians versus c9 c9 feels like copy wants to interact feels like sure and fire wants to control pacing yeah. as much as possible gga just wants to fight they want a team fight especially uh and, and you gotta love a team that always wants to try to scale for that five on five and it just seems like to me you know like t you know gga do resemble a lot of what we saw before in uh, aoe too you know going more so for these 5v5s but there's a little bit more cleanliness in the overall play when they when they do come together as a whole like it just seemed like you know it's like they there's there's definitely a bit more plan going into the that early game to make sure that when they get to the 15 minute mark things are okay they're not super far behind and considering the mechanical prowess from both these teams and especially the roam tyrants from newbie like i i would be interested to see how c9 actually does respond to that you know because i imagine like they want to go for maybe just the more early pick not 2v2 skirmish type compositions we see out of gga yes dog i know i know gga out of the tournament but don't worry about all that right now because what matters is c9a are in front of us true and free look and it all depends on what we can see though before we headed to draft here dean I want to get a little bit of take on perhaps some perhaps some signature picks you might see out of any of these two teams. I think Twisted Fate is going to be big on the day for both mid laners. We like to attack on side lanes and things like that as we, we begin into the drafting phase and things of that sort. Um, I expect that to kind of pop up. I also know that like King is not going to be too, too heavily of a Ziggs player, but Prismal will. Um, so expect that pick to be of higher priority and things of that sort. Also, Alistar, mm -hmm. um, actually interesting just because Isles does play as well as Doobie. So it's interesting. Golden Guardians doesn't want to give that one up, even though Isles has been an amazing playmaker for the side of C9 Academy. One of the bigger reasons, especially in this lower bracket run, making thus far.
And consider right away, like you mentioned, they, they take out the Alistar along with the Thresh too. So two, two, two massive power picks. Also uh, Noha Nubi as well loves playing out the Thresh. And I find he's just been one of the strongest supports in general. So if he's not banned in the first round, he's definitely either like picked B1 or, or R1, R2, depending on how we go forward. But GG this time actually take away the Aurelia. So they're limited in Nows pool too, but also making sure that Darshan can also get another strong pick. Seems like, you know, now it's likely leaning towards picking up that Jace, which we know he's just so good for. Never mind. I'm a liar. C9 has read my mind. They want to limit Nows pool even more. Now, if I see a GP ban within the first rotation, I think it'll make sense as to what they're targeting. But if I don't, Dean, then I'm excited. Um... I always get excited when the GP is available for Niles as it fills a couple of roles. Uh, one of the biggest things I like to see from Niles is that he, when he has backline access, that's easy to kind of uh, apply in a game. Uh, this is anything like, it, it could range from like Orn with an ultimate that can stretch into the backline or Gangplank mm -hmm. who can get barrels, who can get ultimate back into backline. Anytime that that's the case, Niles feels like he has a lot more impact inside of a game than when he's just playing like a, a pure like front player or a poke champion like the Jace, even though he's very good at those types of champions. You see the Lee Sin taken away from Barossa and I know I saw Saw that twisted fate hovered for a second from yunbi thinking they have to take that away because copy will run it it's got to be the case right there immediately at that b1 position not wanting to give over the roaming potential to copy he's been amazing on that champion since back even into like the scouting grounds territory of the previous season yeah, considering right now, just, just all the power he's had, they definitely don't want to allow C9 to out 5v5 what GG wants to bring out. And especially with all that group of pressure, you know, just denying for any small bits of skirmish and making sure they always have the man advantage as you continue throughout this entire game. But the response from C9A will be the rise pick. I actually quite like this. It doesn't give a semi-global, but like, what, 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 what could you call it, Dean? Like, 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 just like just like half a meter global that Ryze has like with his ultimate, like a little bit more agency. But speaking of agency though, another facet power pick for King in that Aphelios. Yeah, wanted to make sure they have, uh, again, these are two of our ADCs that will go into later scaling type champions. Um, things like Ezreal, things like Aphelios put a ton of priority onto those. So it's nothing shocking that the Aphelios gets pulled by C9 Academy. Um, like you said, I I'm a really big fan of the Rise. The earlier laning phase, I think trying to punish the Twisted Fate, he's squishy enough to where like you can put damage into him and re-threaten him. But the roaming potential early from Rise should not be matchable by the likes, or uh, sh should not be like matched to what Twisted Fate can do with that ultimate. So again, it's young be wanting to make that impact quickly uh in the later stages like side laning becomes easier for eyes team fighting insanely strong damage output it all kind of comes together so it really is contingent for yunbi to get out and about on this map and push as hard as possible what i'm seeing right now you love this trundle for two reasons rose thorn and newbie can kind of flex it i'm sure niles probably has it in the pool somewhere as well um so that's really valuable but you can see them setting up now a, a roam mid laner alongside a very hard pushing bot side for prismal who can kind of sit in scale and wait into this aphelios feels like they're going to pick a very strong side top lane and this is where gga is kind of bread and butter is play something early aggressive for niles play into it quickly and then use your scaling in the later stages with like prisma on the bottom side to really start to wreak havoc in team fights and to try to max that roaming right now we do have the con picked up for c9a so bot lane locked in right now for c9 though with the Ophelios and the Rakan. honestly it's kind of expected considering how strong Rakan has been you could potentially you know see the leona uh, like to come out though for the side of gg if they want to match that bot lane pressure as well but we know Rakan and leona do kind of match each other do kind of like even each other out though i would say and plus with with the likes of the ziggs right you want something that can get to places fast and C9A is reading my mind. They want to make sure to limit their options. Dean, bro, it's like it's like I'm in their heads rent free right now. They're, they're like listening to you broadcast and they're picking what it is that you decide because it's your birthday. It's a birthday gift from both of these teams. Just wanting you to look like the, the intelligent mastermind that you truly are in all of their minds. Uh, the big thing I think for C9 is that they're wanting to make sure that uh, right now, like, Aphelios is into a, a Ziggs lane. That's going to be a rough laning phase pretty much no matter what in this situation for the Aphelios. Yeah. Maybe what they want is if Rakan hangs around, can play very defensive, get rid of champions that are capable of doing that. The Bard ban, again, that's a laning one, but more importantly, I think it matches what Rakan can do in a roaming sense. I think eventually they're going to want to leave King to his own devices, let Isle kind of affect the map as much as possible, attempt to, to match a little bit of what the Twisted Fate is going to be moving around, and so they get rid of aggression from both, like, Leona and Bard who can play for for laning but also roam very effectively as well it feels like right now the c9a is almost trying to force niles into that gp pick they're taking out renekton they're taking out jacks but gg has on their side and consider bard is out too so it's like 
I'm just interested to see what they bring out. Okay, now my interests have been satisfied. This not to pick. We've been seeing a little bit throughout the split here, Dean. It's rising up in popularity, and I see why. I'm a big fan of this into the globals that we've been seeing recently. We, we've seen like Twisted Fate pop up quite a bit and then Galio also pop up quite a bit in terms of what they're able to accomplish in the mid lane for like the effect they have on the map. Um, and the reason like you pick Nocturne into it is to be able to shut down that combination with anything as much as possible. You turn off the lights, a lot harder for uh, Galio or G or uh, my apologies for Twisted Fate to be able to kind of mm -hmm. go in and find an impact somewhere else on the map if you can deny that vision and be able to, to, to set them away from where it is that they're trying to go. Camille is blind for Niles, nothing crazy. That's why Renekton and Jax get taken off the board. Those are powerful matchups. It's a question of does Darshan have something special in the pool here? Uh, you getting I'm not sure if he does because I was hoping for the Jarvin so that we could get some more of the circles that I like to talk about too before sure. we get the full Olympic ring. But <laughs> unfortunately, too, with that Nocturne pick, that does Camille, that does completely deny the overall potential of the Camille Galio combo that we've seen before. And so that really erases whatever pressure you could have. And there we go. Nubi has decided to pick up the pick up the Nautilus for himself on the bot lane. And it's going to be Camille Fiora top. Dean, okay, look, I know about this matchup. I know it's a lot of fun, but you break it down for me with your big brain, because I love this, by the way. Um, this is a skill intensive matchup for yes. both sides, uh, very, very heavily, especially that both of them are going no flash. This is a very, very uh, swingy laning phase that can go both ways. I think beginning of the game, pressure that can be put on by the likes of Camille is pretty high. Um, she's got very easily accessible CC with the hook shots. Uh, she can set up plays a little bit easier with like the ultimate, the hook shot combination. Her team fighting is a little bit stronger. But in terms of the real one on one situation that Darshan's going to find himself in, that Fiora is eventually going to be an absolute menace in that one on one kind of combination between these two champions so darshan it's not the trindamir but i love the the spirit of what he's going for here with the pure split push into what's happening here the response we've seen it a couple of times especially earlier on in the tournament we got this matchup quite a bit uh and so darshan feeling uh, comfortable on the likes of the champion very practiced on the fiora from his time previous inside of lcs and all these other splits taking this into the likes of the camille I mean, consider right now the Trinity mid is the overall meta. I would expect that to go into copy anyways, but you know, depending on what we've seen so far, though, it should be a really fun time. We're cut it to a 40 second break, and when we come back, we'll have game number one for y'all. So go nowhere. And we are in, ladies and gentlemen, to game numero uno. It is BO3 between C9 and GG. I'm here with me and my main man, Dean. Woo! Nailed that. <laughs> it's unfortunate my name doesn't end in an A because maybe you could have kept the rhyming scheme going. But, uh, it, you know, what? We, we take what we can get on days like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what matters is that we're here and we're into games here, Dean, and like, now I don't mean to be mean, but I'm kind of keen because things are definitely not what they seem in terms of this 5v5 layout. Oh my God, I'm on fire, bro. Uh, the word green also could have fit in there somewhere, I'm sure, but um, please stop for, for everybody's sake. Please <laughs> stop the rhyming. Um, if you want to keep it going, I'm sure everybody would love to see what you're going to do during the first team fight. And you know what? I'm happy to let that play out, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and throw the red flag for you and immediately <laughs> see so you can stop That's that fine. Way. I mean, that's fine. I understand. No worries. Point taken. Let's talk about what we see right now. This is 5v5. Early words going out towards the going out towards the Raptors for both blue and red. So at least we should be able to track a little bit more what Sternfire is doing. 
And that's the person I'm looking at going throughout this early game here, Dean, as to what kind of impact he's able to have because he needs to be able to do so, especially to get Darshan ahead in this matchup, which could easy snowball out of Niles' favor. Ooh, back and forth. These two already going at each other's throats, man. It was the uh, the Doran Shield as well start. I, I don't want to talk about that too much, but it's Doran Shield instead of Longsword 3 pot, which I know Niles is a big fan of that, even before a lot of people were running it. But you can see the sustain, especially if it's consistent here from the likes of Darshan. He's going to want to keep this pressure up as much as possible, not let the poking come through, because that's how the Doran Shield gets effect. Uh, but back to what it was that you were talking about with Shurn Fire, where we have at least a, a bit of interaction. Nocturne likes to farm to 6 as much as possible. You know your rise isn't going to be like this massively impactful champion, especially since the D-Mats have come through from the likes of the Twisted Fate. Uh, and so your early presence on this map, I think just has to be a bit more uh, quiet than what would normally happen. You don't have a champion that's really going to be able to sustain a bunch of uh, kind of uh, uh, like action about the map as much as possible, which is why you see like Rose Thorn wants to get active very quickly. Nocturne can't really match this. Yeah, I mean, he's already into oh, wow. the, fl the flash not here from Darshan if he has the ignite, but he's going to die too. Though Nas looking to be get like gift over the kill in the first nice. blood goes over to Rose Star. Just an immediate gank. This was red Raptors and then immediately into Grump. That is a, a very unique pathing from Rose Thorn. So that timer not expected right there from the likes of Darshan. Uh, he is going to be able to TP back. Didn't lose all too much in terms of wave. Uh, and better yet, the kill didn't actually go into Niles. It did go onto Rose Thorn's Trundle, which is beneficial because you don't want this Camille still snowballing out of control inside of this matchup. So there is at least that to hang your hat on if you're the likes of Darshan. And again, this is the expectation for GGA to begin with. Is like Twisted Fate wants to bear down on top side. Rose Thorn wants to bear down on top side. The biggest thing they want to do too, take advantage of early tower gold. Mm, okay, Close. all right. Close. We're fine. Everybody's fine, and now that way, both TPs will likely be expunged from both sides. Because considering, actually, mm -hmm. we know with wave, the wave is pushing. Like Nas could just walk back to lane, no. although he might miss a wave. But like, I think if, if he wants to save his TP, yeah, no, he comes back. Yeah, no. Um, this is TP ignite on both sides. You're not giving this up, pretty much, no matter what. And now you have the entire Dorn's uh, blade start actually go into your favor. This was interesting because the Rose Thorn was trying to step into Shurnfire's topside river, contest him for that scuttle crab, thinking he might have had presence. But again, because Niles had only just TP back into a crash wave, he wasn't able to move. Youngby was here, and better yet, Isles. Uh, again, he he got him roamed up from mid lane to make sure the support was here for the likes of Coffee, uh, so that even if Youngby could step out faster, there were going to be three members here faster than two. That actually denies Rose. Thorn a scuttle crab. They're gonna be able to capture both top and bottom scuttle crab. Humongous for Shurnfire. The initial kill, great for Rose Thorn, or at least great for some of the early gold. But again, Golden Guardians have to make use of that very effectively. Once the level six here for Shurnfire, he can start to match some of that pressure from Rose Thorn Trundle. And that would be the interesting part here too, you know, what kind of roams we see coming out from especially both of these junglers, considering, you know, we imagine Rose Thorn would likely be a lot more top focused. They want to shut down this win condition that we have on the side of C9A, just to make sure that if the Fjord doesn't get out of control, considering Niles is already kind of, uh, I want to say, you know, having to play a little bit more weak side, uh, a little bit early on, right? So if they can make sure the C9A doesn't have that kind of pressure across the entire map, then it just comes down to TF and Nocturne. Matching ultimates, duking it out and seeing whether who lands first, the yellow card or the spell shield team. Yes. Um, the big thing I, I think that will eventually come through is Golden Guardians want to take a lot of this early game, even after the level six, and they want to convert a bunch of turret plates. This is like, uh, you've got magic damage and consistent like attack speed buff from the likes of Twisted Fate. You combine that with like double auto cancel from Niles on the likes of this Camille and a Ziggs as well. Um, combined with like a Trundle who's pretty easy to duel with, kind of control the jungle with very early on, especially into another AD champion, be able to drain some of that AD away as much as possible. Um, it, it all comes together and that like Rift Herald should go their way, early tower plate should go their way. Golden Guardians are going to look to kind of ignore this bottom side of the map, ignore the dragon stacking as much as possible so that they can contest with all this kind of neutral gold that exists in these towers. If they're able to bring down one, two towers before the entire like the, the plating goes down, anything like that, that gold is sizable enough to begin start team fighting with when you've got like a Twisted Fate mid game, when you've got a Camille and a Trundle who have that much gold inside of them. Things start to look a little bit rough in the mid game for the side of C9. That I think eventually mm -hmm. ends up being their strategy. It's all about how they can control up until those first Rift Herald comes through and they can start to bear down on towers with these tower taking tools. Yeah, I mean, considering right now, they do have at least uh, uh, around a minute and a half right before anything comes online though, but Shurnfon is already here too. We see Rose Thorn is around the sides. Does it get spotted up by the ward? Does not choose to go in. 
Yunbi is level 6, he can match this, he's already here, yellow card in, Hunter Darshan, stun out, 1v1 against the two. Then later the top laner, should be able to get oh, that, that kill, you'll be one more auto, oh. look at the back end, there we go, he picks that one up, gets taken down though, and stepping all of C9A are here, nice knock up from them, Isles is in on the case, and copy, cleans up. It's all about being able to roam a lot faster. And here you see that the Rokana is able to get out of lane a lot quicker than what Newbie is able to. Um, and, and then, of course, they're leaving bot side to their own devices. Prismal's not going to be able to punish super, super heavily into this bottom lane up against King on his lonesome when Newbie was that far behind, wasn't able to kind of make a roam in. King gets to dip out, and all of a sudden, all these members get to come through. Copy's able to get up to the top side as fast as possible. That semi global coming in clutch. Sure and fires, they're ready to respond. And that is Golden Guardians attempting yet again a play to top side to try to get this Camille going, defended against from C9, shutting down that early aggression. Because right now too, I was actually seeing both Newbie and Rose Store right at the top side. I would, I would have expected them to like set up a little more vision, make a bigger play there before, but instead not C9 looking to make a play here yet again. It's still be too, but I can't imagine they want to go up against a tankiness and Nautilus along with Rose Store right now, the Trundles. They're both pretty big beefy boys and Shurnfire can't cut through them yet, but Yubi can spot it up by the ward. To go back to a bit more of a neutral stay as he does shine. Oh, look, look at that best. That's a nice knock up to big collapse on their end <laughs> and beautiful play. It was that was a split second. They got it. That was insanely well played from the likes of Darshan. We had Q into the W and everything else that had come about. We'll actually jump back to top fight first because uh, that's what was really important. Again, Shirdfire is already hovering here knowing that the play can come through. Darshan does his uh, his damnedest to try to heal through this. The Ignite kind of denies that. Actually stalls against Yungi long enough to where like Niles ends up getting put out of this fight. The turn from Shirdfire gets into Yungi, but again, Rise able to ult uh, the Frikan up into the top lane as fast as possible. Uh, this is the rotation from Rise that you want to see. They're able to respond to Twisted Fate quickly. Uh, Shirdfire's ultimate also slows down that play substantially when you've got multiple auto attackers and you're trying to find single targets. It's a little bit difficult to try to track those down in the midst of everything. So good on the side of uh, C9. Able to stall that one fast enough as Rick trailed the target to affection. Both teams going for it. And as he's going yet against Pulsu oh, wow. already down, but there we go. The collapse from GG as well. Responding back to the little bit what C9 put out to them. Isles not too far as well. Nice little two for all as the Rift Herald is going to be GGA. Right there, C9. They're trying to wrestle away the Rift Herald. They know GGA can do some really significant damage when they've got this in their back pocket, uh, but they're just not ready to fight whatsoever. I have to give a ton of props there to Rose Thorn. Rose Thorn's pillar completely killed off Shurnfire by trapping him inside of the Mega Inferno Bomb's middle radius doing additional damage. So uh, really, really well communicated. Everybody's showing up faster. GGA's composition is kind of better to fight with in this earlier stage, given that they don't need the same kind of itemization, same kind of time that a Rise and an Aphelios would. So right there, GGA punishing C9 accordingly for taking that neutral objective off the board, or trying to take that neutral objective off the board. And we see it yet again too, you can see that all three of them are kind of roaming around there, but Darshan on Ooh, the back end it. just couldn't get there in time, and yeah, like we were saying here before, Dean, just the immediate collapse, the lockdown potential from GGA. Like, truly going back to the point, you mentioned about these 5v5s, which has set themselves out for, and already we're seeing the power of which. And uh, again, like Fiora's power isn't ever really in team fights. It's not that she can't really contribute to a team fight, but it's that normally you want to stay in a side lane and keep Niles there as well. When you have Niles inside of that team fight, especially that one specifically, King wasn't there yet. So as soon as you kill one person, the next person gets ulted. That's another person dead. There is no way to combat in that like 2v4, 2v5 situation without your marksman having any gold whatsoever. So it's, it's again, good punishment from GGA, drawing in the attention of C9 who is trying to contest a Rift Herald. They had no kind of actual bearing to do. Uh, at minimum, they do gather up the dragon that was theirs in the first place they maybe could have been able to do something with like the bottom side of their map a bit better and more effectively right there uh by putting like that dragon on on the response immediately to the rift herald but they do at least end up getting that neutral objective for themselves and as right now to rose thorn looking to get against shut down darshan though but reinforce out the tp is off from copy is some of the rift herald then we see certain fire along the other side looking to just match any sort of play they could potentially come down but instead It'll just be the share of gold between them as you go <laughs> back and again to a bit more of a neutral state here, Dean. But going back to the point that you were seeing so far, though, like we see, like a little, little bit back and forth already. We're pretty much at an even state between these two teams still. So, like, although like GGA right now, like, like things are going fine for them, but for C9, I would like to see like a little bit more proactivity because if they are to really make this, or really make this, uh, Nocturne pick work. Um, 
Something I uh, oh actually we get a plan in a minute. Oh maybe. actually yeah already yeah we see you going down nice Sonius he's fine you're okay. Yeah no worries there. Isle is up on the top side of the map again. Um they they're anticipating play towards top tower. I, I actually am anticipating that GGA will go away from playing towards top tower only because once first mythic is done for Niles I think there's enough threat onto Darshan's uh, Fiora that like maybe he'll have to back off in terms of a situation where they don't know where the jungler is. That was aggressive. Rosethorn oh, man. Rosethorn. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, all right, go to Oh! <laughs> okay. All right, close on both ends, but uh -huh. Rosethorn maybe a little bit of a danger, but it's not like Isles can do a ton to him right now. Shurnfire is there. He <laughs> could look to punish and dive alongside them, but that's twice how oh. this worked out. <laughs> and he just... So close. He's like, he's like right there, man. <laughs> oh, that's so pain. Like... Uh, like, right there, King is in a terrible, like, position. He's in, like, a 1v2 situation with a Trundle. And, and I was like, okay, the Flash should be enough to get him out of that situation. Thankfully, Prismal has enough damage from range. What really saved Rosethorn there was actually the ultimate on the King, taking away those, like, kind of defensive stats of an Aphelios you wouldn't normally expect to be that important, but in that situation was enough to kind of get him over the bar and not really get punished whatsoever, as well as, like, uh, the, the additional health that he would have gotten off of that kill just underneath the tower. So, uh, props to Rosethorn, knowing his limits right there, because he did get a a little bit curious, uh, a little bit strenuous towards the end of that one, but good punishment again onto the likes of King. They're able to find that kill for the likes of Prismal. All of a sudden, this Ziggs is looking mean inside of this. Camille has one plate left on that top side tower, so first tower is definitely accessible. If they ever want a lane swap, Ziggs just takes that immediately with the likes of the W, so that's easy enough to try to have. In fact, TP's coming up, I think, quick enough. I wonder if they really try to force into top side, use that bomb to kill off that top tower, like the, the one plate that's going to be remaining up there. There. I don't know if it's worth the whole TP at this point, but like, uh, who knows? Maybe they, they anticipate being able to snowball off that one tower into it, so the, the, the inner tower, which gives a bunch of bonus gold as well. I mean, consider where we're at right now, we see a lot of people just bunched up right near the mid lane too, possibly looking to maybe die yet again onto Yunbi and the way, the way he got punished before though. But, you know, like, I don't imagine there's uh, much of a chance of personal like roaming anytime soon, considering no, how he's kind of just landlocked in the bot side, but. <laughs> UNB <laughs> right now though, he really goes in, nice punish onto King, a lot of damage being no put flash. down though, but he's just under half, so for Pops, that shield bow, as UNB barely gets out alive, okay, we just hairs win. This has been a, a pretty interesting game plan. GGA is, is playing to what we've seen them do time and time again. They've got a strong top side for Nas. Oh, right back into the middle. Oh, lane. yeah, they go back yet again. The strong top side into Nas. Look, look, looking to punish that strong top side. Oh. Nas gets a nice shield. Okay, use that passive, making it work. So far, cannot get the re return as that. Okay, the turret is traded off beautifully, but wow. Rostron so far gets punished by it. And the TP finally gets Prismal out of that bot lane. They attempt to force as fast as possible as Niles had roamed down from top into mid just to cover on that bottom side to maybe open up for some pushing power for the Ziggs so they could try to take that bottom tower as the first one in the game if they had all the members there. Uh, C9's play does at least pull multiple members back to the opposite side. This was Yungi playing into bottom side. King has no flash. The cleanse was useless here because it did nothing. Um, I I mean, he can't really do anything. They know that for that uh, fact. And then you see again, GGA step up to try to pull bottom tower. So now you come back to mid lane. This is Niles who's just covering to make sure that this mid wave isn't going to be punishable. Would have wanted to go back topside if this ultimate hadn't come in. Really well played from him. Isle also getting up here very quickly to try to make this response. The ultimate just barely saving his life long enough to keep him under tower. This trundle pillar again. These rose thorn trundle pillars have been gorgeous. And the TP from his will to punish this further. No, they don't get bottom tower. They traded off a couple of plates for Fiora. I actually no plates, just tower damage mostly for the Fiora on the legs in the top side. But that was a very good set of circumstances for GGA to be able to pull multiple kills in the the map continue to get prismal rolling and again they, they, they didn't lose much in that process niles in exchange for a couple of kills onto your zig you'll take all day and dean like you said it before as well that like gga were looking to play scrappy they were going to do so dragon is not the priority as already you know they gave up the first two it's not super big but this ocean drink i'm sure as you get to get up towards that soul point that can become more of a priority but they get both of these rift heralds mm -hmm. and considering how now is already pushed in that top side. They could just crack open the tier two with Rosestorm. Yep, they're gonna do exactly that. Yep, and although it'll be responded to on bot side. But then whether you I want to take a little bit of a look back as well. Going to going through what GGA season, so okay, fine, my bad, I won't do that. <laughs> Never mind, guys. No more narrative for y'all. But <laughs> but yeah, like GGA's improvement so far this season of just being fearless has definitely been exponential. 
Um, they, they I, I think, started off the split without much of a refined style. Um, and I like the where they've kind of taken the team, where it's just expected. Another play in a mid lane. They're fine. Wow. Uh, but you get the knockout too, but like, what are they gonna do instead? They'll do the response you get from Nubi for TP4 style as well. Now it's in the middle of the entire fight. See King locked down, and Mortal Shield pop. So much damage being put down, but he just stopped barely dies. But is it gonna be enough for him to stay alive as they keep going in? Response back yet again. Nice saw 2v2. But C9 didn't want more. They locked out. They locked out with Yunbi as well. Oh, Marauder would have been to do it, but he gets out of line. The Knight takes him down. No! C9A barely come out on top. Able to come out of that fight. I'm actually a little curious exactly how that happened. It started off again. These Nocturne Ultimates are aiming nowhere but mid lane. It is just a cruise missile directly at whoever on GG <laughs> is standing in the mid lane time and time again. This time, Yumbi is able to come out and GG call for a counter play to come in. The TP or uh, the movement from Niles is likely to get him into mid lane. I want to see how this went so kind of awry that quickly. I have to guess it's likely a combination of. Uh, oh, nope. There's the, the Moonlight Pitch. I was like, maybe that was what it was. You do see Ryze was able to get into this to create this kind of four on three situation initially so they can focus down Nile so far a little bit more than they would have wanted. Rose Thorn also doesn't auto attack this entire time. Surefire is able to stay alive much longer than they would have wanted because again Prismal doesn't hit the bomb. I guess that's all it was is there were a couple of members that were low to begin with. The focus wasn't there from GGL to be able to pull those kills quickly enough and the damage into the backline wasn't there because again Rose Thorn wasn't able to auto attack. Prismal wasn't able to hit backline uh, and it cost them at least a little bit. It's still an advantage for GGA but C9 somehow being able to pull out an advantageous fight. And going back to the point, yeah, because like it, it was a little bit closer in between the two. Like it just seemed like a bit more of a split call as you kind of look look ahead and break down that fight. Because like you even saw the newbie go in, but Ooh. you didn't see super sure about it as they popped the Nocturne ultimate no just to make sure they don't have vision on every single one of them. But they oh. do get one down. Nice blast cone. The king is sure and fight dead on a okay as they just set up vision bot side. And King just barely got over the edge of yeah. that Blasco. Did burn cleanse as well. I don't think it was him that actually initiated the potential of that Blasco and from coming through. Um, I, I like. This has been like a little bit back and forth, but the biggest thing is GGA is accomplishing the one task they've set for themselves. They got first tower topside. They just pulled mid tower as well. Bot tower is probably within striking range. Fiora is not strong enough at this second to kind of overcome what it is that Camille has. That moment is slowly approaching for Niles, so you do have to consider that. But I think Prismal set up for a position in which as long as he doesn't get one shot by Surefire, who isn't doing too hot, this game is going to be looking really well. Um, your one real threat at this moment is actually Copy. Um, mm -hmm. From Staka Copy, he didn't have the greatest academy split, especially after like the incredible split he had in the first one, where they ended up going on to the finals, uh, ended up like almost winning proving grounds that uh, back and forth a couple of times. Um, yeah. This split wasn't that same kind of transcendent split, uh, but when he's on, he really is on, and he's able to do so much in terms of the game. And this rise has looked fantastic, and this is the one saving grace that C9 has in their back pockets: 211 CS rise at only 19 minutes into the game with four kills. This is a, a very very powerful pick into this composition, especially when you think. About about, you know, Twisted Fate doesn't have the biggest range and in terms of damage when he's outside of auto attacking, Rose Thorn's melee, Niles is melee, um, you know, Newbie is melee. There's yeah. so low range for Ryze to be able to kind of punish you. The only threat against him is Prismal, and I, I don't think that's going to be enough necessarily, uh, unless you really do have somebody able to focus him down with like the gold card or the likes of the Hextech ultimatum. Which I don't imagine will happen, like considering your prison right now, like uh, if they do have the single target focus, like more than likely they're they're looking to get down, you know, King or Shurn Fire, mm -hmm. depending on what kind of objective they're really fighting around, right? But and copy though, so whether he kinda just free fire the back line, putting out all them blue orbs and considering how strong he is, right, it should be but you're just to see how if, how these fight break down as you continue throughout the game. But we're talking a bit about seeing as a cabbie split Dana, you were making a point before about just seeing how the style of GGA as well in the overall caddy split has really kind of based out too. That it has. Um, they, they've kind of come into their own. Um, I always like when they have more engaged tools than what they've got right now. Uh, of course, Doobie's actually doing his best to, to make sure that that's the case. Speaking of engaged tools, let me go and get it. Oh, there you go, Shun Fire Star. There you go, nice main target to focus on that Dragon Isles as a one more chop. <laughs> And there we go, he's got two. Darshan, the backs are looking to run away. Oh no, he gets oh he gets bounced back. Sadly, King is dead. Darshan with the last three but left alive. One row auto will be it? able to do it as copy is here. Can he come on up? Can he get the can he get the oh. jam to the duty he's done? But no, he's stuck on the backside. No, he could not get down Prismal. Pain, but that's the ace for GGA. 
that was perhaps one of the best stopwatches I've actually ever witnessed from like a Ziggs, and you'll get a chance to see that in just a second. An engagement from GGA in the river, constantly wanting to push another Nautilus hook, proving that that hitbox is the most reliable thing inside of League of Legends. Uh, can we Moonlight Vigil here? It brought down one person. That was a pitiful Moonlight Vigil. Not because the King did not hit like the right target. It's because he has no gold. If he has like one, two kills, if he's properly fed in this game, that Moonlight Vigil probably wins this fight for C9. But because of how far behind King is, unfortunately, it doesn't do enough to be able to win much. Darshan can't 1v3 carry here. So instead, Copy steps in to do this. But again, this interaction is something I want to note. I I'm almost positive what happens is Copy's able to land E here, but then immediately, the Zonius is not able to let the Q come through and reset. So he's down Q and E doesn't have the reset to be able to root Rose Thorn and keep him away from himself. That denial of the E and any ability reset really shut out the likes of Copy's ability to kind of use Phase Rush, kite backwards against the likes of Rose Thorn, and it put them in a very bad position. So Copy, you know, if that combo lands, probably kills out Ziggs and is able to proc Phase Rush, run away, ends up kind of salvaging that fight. Great stopwatch time from the likes of Prismal to deny that combo from coming through and remove the those cooldowns from the rise tool belt and we were just talking about copy before you know just about just how well he's doing in this entire game but he was a little bit late to that fight we were mentioning like he had to be that main damage deal he had to be able to free fire on the back side because he just could not get there with his i want to say municipal level ultimate because like it's not global it's not like you know prevent or it's not like you know like statewide but it just gets the job done like and has just enough distance to make some sort of an impact so that's what i'm gonna kind of brand it as but consider what we've seen so far between these two teams your dean like your gg right now hold all the cards in their hands to put down as much pressure as possible onto the side of c9a they can force down these towers and they can even look towards baron as we continue throughout because considering they have like huge gold lead two towers oh. on their end, but Sharon Fire right now as well might look to make it a little bit more even though I saw a lockdown as well from Copy. Lard has been put out another fan cast oh. Donnie to keep Prisma alive as look at the backside. Copy might be dead. Yep, his Donnie's of his own will not help him. A little bit too deep, and that's the Baron for GGA. Another member shows in the mid lane, another Surefire ultimate, and unfortunately no capitalization right there. As Prismal is able to get out of dodge as fast as possible. Combination of the W with that Zonia is able to keep him upright. Uh, as well as being able to do just a bunch of damage to a number of members. Two people just kind of backed out of that fight uh, while the re-engage was there attempting to try to find something. And that's what split and mostly led to two members now copy and Surefire going down. Opens up Baron. GGA have done a great job kind of capitalizing on this early game. They started off with Niles at least a little bit to make sure Fiora wasn't just going to be able to kind of pummel her way through the side lane and since then they shifted it into a lot of bot side focus using Yunvi, using prismal especially to kind of siege down on towers use this range to their advantage bring fight after fight into their favor and you can see like the amount of damage they were able to do with the gold with the towers that they'd taken off the board was enough to win them team fights because c9's composition isn't really designed to work super well together you got a diver and nocturne you got a split pusher and darshan and then you've got like this rise and aphelios who are both amazing team fighters but you don't have the best set up for them to be able to start in and here's where they would have started previously beforehand like you mentioned it's literally an enemy missile every single one of these in the mid lane but oh. the fact that prison gets out alive again and we see that big that massive peril dean completely disrupts all of c9's plans because they can't just go in as five and so suddenly they're stuck on the outside looking in like one might say even waving through a window I, I'm convinced after now watching Rosethorn for the better part of two years that his trundle is the best character he's got in his tool belt. Like, it's just my favorite thing to see. I know EE, e. like, prided himself on playing a bunch of, like, carries and stuff back in the day. I know he has, like, things like the Kindred that were in the back pocket and things. Uh, but whenever he pulls out trundle, I just get a, a little bit more giddy than when any other person brings out trundle. Because his always seems to just, like, spark joy whenever I get to watch it. Which is very not common, because, like, trundle's not always the most interesting to watch. But Rosethorn seems to find a way for these pillars to just have the most impact. Of, of any pillars that you get to see most of the time when tumblers are pulling the champion. Let's see what more pillars you can put down right now. There we go. There's another one too, or another massive one as it slows down two key members on the side of C9A. King Chunk down to super duper low, and Osborne gets out of that one as well. But the sieging power you mentioned before, Dean, that is the, uh, the massive strength right now. For GGA as they can force down this in him. They get the tower for free too. Mid lane is pushing in for them. So I already said this before, but they can take a lot of this game under their own terms. Is 
Darshan looking to just stop a couple of backs though with Dragon up in 10 seconds. The C9A, they still have a possible win condition here. If they deny this, they extend this game for a little bit more time. And Ocean Drake with all this healing looks pretty good in my opinion. I don't think walking into this is the best idea since Prismal has just gotten a back off and everyone else is completely blown. Uh, they're going to find it. matter. No. <sighs> Bye. See you later. Tragic. Sayonara. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's Isle coming up. He's trying to put down vision so that his team can walk up safely. But again, they don't really know where, whether GGA took full back timers with the Baron buff to just like back and then immediately come back to compete for River, or whether they were actually just hiding out of vision. As it turns out, they flipped the coin and it went up. Uh, it came up tails, and unfortunately, Isle gets caught out. Because of that, not only do they not have their support, they don't have one of their primary engage tools alongside Shurnfire uh, inside of like the dive potential to set up like a copy realm warp to get him on top of members that are necessary, so he can actually put out damage in a fight. But also, you lose all your warding. You can't actually even work your way into the river because you don't know whether GGA has already finished the dragon. You don't know whether they're sitting waiting for you to fight. It's just not there. So C9 have to back off. They don't get a chance. Uh, this game, it's looking very difficult for C9 to come back in because like responding to the siege alone is going to be difficult. If they wanted to wear them down, GGA could just sit here for the next 10 minutes, wait for the next two dragons, and all of a sudden you have a four stack ocean soul siege composition with like a Ziggs, you're never beating that. It's not going to happen here for C9. They have to make a miracle happen if they want to try to come back, but right now, uh, I feel like we're, we're preparing for what looks like a game two here. Yeah, like most definitely. It's right. And if we were to look at game two right now, as you want, I actually hold that because it seems as though GGA and both C9A know they have to make their final stand very, very soon. And considering how they're setting up this 4 1 or 5v5 in the top side, you can just force down this tower too to get the knockoff out the oh, copy. Sure but fire. nice, Zonia. See what she does on all that damage. But sure fire is likely just set the tower still alive right now. As Rondo's taking up all that damage, he doesn't even go down, bro. Just everything thrown into his face, and he's perfectly fine. That's why he's a troll king. And king, for the last two left alive yet again, the copy managed to survive through all of that. I cannot do much more than just survive. The damage output right now from GGA is exponential. And the team fighting that we've seen, absolutely phenomenal. The C9A, like you said, Dean, have to look towards game number two, because this game one is uh, pretty much done and dust. And unfortunately, you see King at the backside. Gonna put as much damage as he can. Maybe just get one more auto but now the chomp that kick him out. A nice little crash we'll take the bomb out too to get the in him gga oh. phenomenal stuff from start to finish yeah uh, i gotta give props to them again it's kind of difficult oftentimes we see gga being this team that like they, they prefer to kind of sit there and wait for neutral objectives and play for more of a five on five type strategy here they, they didn't go for that they went for a little bit harder execution be like okay niles we'll, we'll put you on a camille we're gonna rock for our zigs we're gonna go for like tower plate tower plate use that gold and kind of snowball and it worked out very well for themselves they did an amazing job shutting out nocturne making sure that threat wasn't there into backline so that they could set up this more siege type pokey type composition with the likes of the zigs worked out insanely well for themselves. Sideline was never able to get going for C9. And so everything that C9 kind of might have had going for them got just closed off as C9 or uh, as GGA continued to, you know, make that gold lead rise further and further. But as one door closes, Dean, another one opens. That second door right now for C9 is game number two. We'll see if they make the comeback too after this.